One great way to profit from investing is to buy assets at one price and then sell them at a higher price. Basic maths, right? But the profits you take when you sell these assets are called capital gains, and they're subject to taxes. Like any liability, it's important to understand what they are and how much they're going to cost you come tax time. Fortunately, there are some strategies you can use to minimize how much capital gains tax you owe and keep more money in your back pocket. Now, it's important to note in this video, we're going to be speaking in general terms, and this information may not be relevant in your specific circumstance. It's always best to consult the IRS or a tax professional before making any tax-related decisions. Taxes are complex and vary depending on a lot of factors. Let's start with a simple example. Say you're an average investor with a regular taxable brokerage account. Over the course of a year, you purchase a share of Apple stock for $100 and it increases to $120. At this point, you've gained $20, but it's an unrealized gain because you won't profit until you sell that stock. No matter how long you hold that stock or how much its price changes, you won't be taxed on gains as long as you don't close the position and gains remain unrealized. Now, other types of income from stocks like dividends may still be subject to taxes, but these might not necessarily be considered capital gains. Now, if we go back to our example, let's say you sell the stock at $120. At this point, you now have a realized capital gain and it's a taxable event. You now owe taxes on the $20 profit. Now, while this video mainly concentrates on stocks, capital gains taxes also apply to other types of investments like real estate, bonds, and mutual funds. So how much are capital gains taxed? It mainly depends on two factors, how long you held the investment and how much you earn. There are two types of capital gains, short-term and long-term. Proceeds from investments you sell after holding for one year or less are generally classified as short-term capital gains. They're typically taxed at the same rate as your ordinary income, which is determined by the marginal tax bracket you fall into. If you look at the marginal tax rates for the 2020 tax year, they ranged from 10% to 37%, but rates can change over time, so it's best to check with the IRS for current information. Proceeds from investments held for more than a year are typically classified as long-term capital gains. Taxes on them are usually favorable because the U.S. government views them as a valuable resource benefiting the economy. For reference, the long-term capital gains rate for most Americans in 2020 did not exceed 15%. Capital gains are generally reported as part of your annual tax return, which could increase your tax liability when you file. You may want to keep money aside in case you have to pay if you realize any gains. Because taxes can significantly impact the performance of your portfolio, it's important to be proactive in tax planning. Here are a few strategies you can follow. First, weigh the pros and cons of short-term investments versus long-term investments. Active investors may attempt to increase returns by quickly buying and selling investments. However, because of increased taxes and fees, it's difficult for most people to outperform a well-diversified portfolio of long-term investments that are almost always taxed at a lower rate. When planning your investment strategy, consider how the investment holding period can affect your tax bill. Secondly, consider maximizing tax-advantaged accounts, like retirement and education accounts. Depending on the type of account, you may be able to buy and sell investments without having to pay capital gains taxes. Reducing your tax burden could potentially help your portfolio grow faster. Third, in taxable accounts, make the most of your losses. Benefiting from losses may sound counterintuitive, but the IRS actually allows you to write off certain trading losses, which can help offset some of your capital gains taxes. For example, tax loss harvesting is a strategy that involves closing certain positions to intentionally realize losses that reduce your tax liability. Many brokerages offer automated tax loss harvesting services, but it's not right for everybody, so be sure to check with a tax or financial advisor. Of course, tax planning and some capital gains calculations can be confusing. That's why even seasoned investors enlist the help of tax professionals to make sure their taxes are in order. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something in today's video. To stay up to date on the latest content, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell on the way out. See you next time.